Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a piece of malware called Scam POS. This is pretty interesting. I was reading an article over the weekend about uh, the Kronos Bank intrusion in relation to the malware tech blog situation, which has been widely publicized online lately. Uh, I found this article from Proofpoint back in November 2016, which said that uh, Kronos was actually being used to deliver a point of sale malware. In this particular case, the point of sale malware was called Scam POS. Uh, for those who are kind of less familiar, point of sale malware, uh, the, the kind of aim of it is to capture payment card information and exfiltrate that data back to bad guys so they can obviously use that payment information for their nefarious purposes and the malware will obviously be targeting uh, till points and payment systems uh, in order to do that because obviously that's where those transactions get taken place. I managed to pick up a, a copy of Scan POS from Virus Total, and I thought this would just serve as a, a, a kind of good guide for some quick disassembly techniques that you can use with either Pro to um, have a look at the code and see what it's doing under the hood and get a feel for what's going on. So uh, first thing I like to do, actually, I've got my binary here in my Windows 10 VM, is just double check and disable ASLR. And it's a good, a good technique to use and a good habit to get into. And you can use CFF Explorer for this. Just go into DLL characteristics, click here, and you can untick that DLL can move option. And that will just make sure that um, if you do perform some analysis on this particular binary, uh, let's say in IDA Pro or whatever disassembler that you choose to use, that the memory offsets um, that uh, you're looking at and maybe noting down for future reference are not gonna change the next time that you actually load the binary. So I've just saved a new copy and then you can use that uh, new copy which has got uh, ASLR disabled on it uh, in order to perform your analysis. Uh, so let's uh, load it into IDA. Uh, we'll let IDA do all of its stuff uh, in the background here. One of the first things I like to do when I first look at some malware is, is actually look at the import address table. And that can, you can tell a lot from a piece of malware just by looking at the API calls that it's actually referencing. You can kind of get a flavor for, for, for what it's up to. Uh, and so here, what we'll do, in fact, let me just get rid of these other two windows here and just make this screen a little bit bigger. Um, we can have a look at the imports table and we can see here there's quite a few imports which suggest that the malware is probably not packed, which is a good thing. Uh, we can see there's re a call to read process memory. That definitely caught my eye the first time I had a look at this particular uh, import address table. You, you know, any kind of malware which is reading the process uh, memory uh, of whatever process, maybe itself, maybe obviously of another process, then uh, that's of interest to us. We want to see what it's doing with that information. Uh, we can see some process iteration stuff as well. So looking at the first process and the next process, uh, probably in part of a loop, um, and some other stuff as well, which you, you know are of interest to us. And particularly at the bottom here, we have uh, four API calls which are associated with network activity as well. Uh, so it looks like you know indeed we've got some process iteration, we've got some network activity, and there's all uh, a few other bits, bits and bobs in between as well. So stuff to get us going. Um, great thing about IDA is you can um, double click the um, API call of interest to you. You'll get you'll get um, brought to the reference here in kernel 32. You can right click and you can click on jump to crossref to operand, or, or just press your X key, and IDA Pro will actually show you where this particular API call is used within the code we can click and go to that and we're here we're now in the in the middle of, a, of quite a big function if we press our space bar we can actually just go into graph view and that'll give us a little bit more of a an idea of um, of what's going on in this particular subroutine so we can see actually the first api call a part of this function is create tool help 32 snapshot which will give us a snapshot of the processes on the machine it'll look at the first process and look to get a handle to that particular process from the snapshot and eventually what we do is we come down to here to open process so we're actually going to open the process in order to get a valid handle um, to the, pro the first process in the list and then subsequently it's going to be the second and third and we're going to iterate through all of the processes in that uh, particular snapshot. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, one of the things it does um, straight away after calling an open process is it moves this particular offset into the ECX register. So if you just highlight um, this particular offset, this memory location, you can see that it equates to the string SVC host. And you can add a comment if you want using your semicolon key. Uh, so you can uh, kind of serve as a reminder to you what that particular offset uh, or that particular instruction relates to. Uh, and, that, and that's just a kind of good guide if you do uh, come across this code again during your analysis. Uh, so we, it's it's moving that into the ECS regis, ECX register and there's you can see a few instructions down, there's a comparison between EDI and ECX and then there's a jump if zero, which means if the comparison matches, we're gonna follow the green branch here on the um, on, on the instruction flow uh, and that's actually gonna you can hover over it and get a, a get a kind of preview for where that code is going and that's going to actually look and get the process ID uh, and perform some some kind of comparison between the process ID so it's looking for SVC host 
it's going to get the process ID uh, of the um, of the process it's looking at and, and of FC, SVC host as well. It's going to do some comparison of that and make some make some kind of decision. If you double click the branch, uh, it'll actually take you to where it's going to go. Uh, so you can see here that's the, the the comparison. There's a jump if zero. It's going to take you here again if you hover over the green. So jump if zero. So if those if those two match, if it's SVC SVC host, then it's actually going to jump to process thirty two next. So it's going to actually skip SV, SVC host and skip on to the next. Uh, uh, process that's in the list. Let's just go back a little bit in our code because we kind of uh, oop, we didn't see all of the uh, all of the stuff that we wanted to. Um, so let's just kind of scroll back up a little bit here. So we we got to open process. Um, it did this check for SVC host. Let's say we um, it, it's nothing to do with SVC host, and therefore we carry on down here. So we get the actual name of the um, the name of the. Uh, process which is being looked at. We also get, um, we, we kind of follow it down here. Um, again, there's another offset that's being moved into the ECS, e ECX register. And again, hover over it. We've got ESI times four here. So, um, and it, it's going to increment ESI every single time it uh, goes through this kind of process. So the first off, it's it, it's going to look at what looks to be iExplore.exe. Then it's going to increment ESI. And then you increment that, it's going to move, you know, to the next um, uh, point in this particular offset. And if we double click it in IDA, we get uh, a nice little kind of structure here of what is, is gonna be iterated over. So you can see the first in the list is iExplore.exe, then Explorer, then System, then SMSS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got a nice list here of process names which are being iterated through. Um, and then there's a comparison, right? So it moves it into the ECX register. It increments ESI to kind of move through the list. And then there's a comparison between EDI and, and ECX. Um, and then if it's not zero, then it's going to jump. And if it's not zero, that means that uh, it doesn't match. Uh, but if it does match, then it's going to come back through this uh, particular code block here. Um, and it's then going to follow the green path and go to process 32 next. So it looks like this is actually what's called what, what's probably called a whitelist. So it's looking for um, it's going to iterate all of the processes in your, on your in your system. But if it match, if the process that it's currently working on matches one one of those processes in that particular list, then it's actually going to skip over it. Because if you go back to what those processes are, they're very common kind of system processes that every, that you will always see on your on your machine. And there will be obviously a lot of entries for SVC host as well. So this particular malware doesn't really want to spend any time looking at the uh, the memory uh, contents uh, of those particular processes because they're probably not uh, the point of sale processes that are running on the machine. So that's cool. So once it passes through the whitelist, uh, we get virtual query X again, which is going to kind of give us some information about the uh, pro uh, about the memory, and then we actually get to here where it drops down into read process memory. So it's going to it's going to get the um, the memory pro the the memory of that particular process that we're currently iterating on through the the loop of the of the process snapshots, uh, and then we see here there's a call just before that kind of code block finishes. There's a call to this particular subroutine here four four zero two sixty zero, and if we go to that, we can double click it we're in quite a lot of code here and there's, you know again we're still in graph view and there's an awful lot of kind of flow to this particular um uh, this particular area of the of the binary but you know quickly kind of scanning through it the first thing we see with this, there's quite a few comparisons so there's a comparison here uh to uh, the al register which is the uh the lower portion of the EA, eax register we can see here that there's a comparison to 3d and hex uh if you if you kind of right click that um you can see some other representations so you can put it in base 10 base 8 or base 2 uh, or in this case you can actually have a look at the ascii representation of what the base 10 uh, value would be from the ascii table so that's looking for the equal sign. Um, then there's a comparison here uh, where it's looking for uh, the letter D. And then if we kind of move through, we've got a comparison to number three. Um, and then if there's a, if, if again, there's, um, the, the, the logic here is it, it performs a comparison. If it's zero, it matches three. If it's not zero, then it doesn't match. And therefore it's going to kind of carry on down this particular um, part of the code, it's going to look for four, then it's going to look for five, then it's going to look for six. So it's actually going to look for contents of the memory that start with the number three, start with the number four, start with the number five, start with the number six. And that's kind of indicative, I guess, of, of card numbers. Um, you know, it's looking for that structure within the memory. And you can follow this through, right? We won't spend too much time going through all of this code because there's an awful lot of assembly to go through. Um, but you can kind of follow this through and actually validate that once it's found that particular, uh, what looks to be a card string uh, within the memory, it will perform the loon algorithm to, to make sure that it's a, kind of like a valid card number as well. So we'll skip back, um, but we can add a comment here. Um, and it'll be you know something like check for card data 
Um, and that just, again, gives us an idea of what that particular subroutine is doing. Once it's found it, um, we, we kind of drop down into this code block here where there's a couple more um, uh, kind of routines that we're going through, but we see there's some conversion here um, you know, from Y char to multi byte. So we're kind of creating st a string here uh, within the process. And we can see some uh, what look like parameters, right? So we've got user equals and then we've got process equals or proc equals, whatever. So it's probably like, you know, um, you know what process we're currently working on. We're kind of building a string and also obviously what the, the context of the user is, as, a user is as well. And then all kind of roads at the minute lead to this particular subroutine here. Just before we end up at uh, process 32 next, we get this call to this subroutine at 402 double nine over so we want to inspect that and have a look at it we double click it and go into it again we're, we're faced with boatloads of assembly but we kind of scroll down and look for the api calls we can see here the first one is is internet open so that's great so we've got this uh, data equals parameter we've also got a user agent parameter what it looks like here uh, and then here we've got this hard-coded uh, c2 so invoice sharepoint.com uh, which is all being pushed to the stack right before we connect to um, internet connect w and then we've got um, the open request api call that just follows it we can see it's a post request and actually it's going to post it to forward slash gateway.php so all of those parameters it's going to pass to and actually if you if you follow through the um the assembly in a bit more detail you would see that the the track data so the the card data is actually going to be passed as part of that post request uh, within the body of the post so if it so essentially the malware is going to iterate through the processes it's going to look it's going to make sure that it's not looking at a process in that whitelist once it looks at um, a particular process and it finds what it what it thinks is a valid card number it's then going to pipe this back out to this hard-coded C2 that here that's in, in the actual binary. So once it's done that, we go back, um, it just literally sits there in a loop. It goes to process 32 next, and it goes next, next, next. And again, so you know it follows this big green uh, arrow here. So if we double click it, we go right to the top of our code. So again, we go through the whole thing again, and it goes all the way through that snapshot that we originally took. Uh, and then eventually, once it's finished all that, it kind of sits in a while loop. Um, but once it's finished going through that snapshot and, and piping out all the data, then uh, it will obviously close down as well. So essentially, that's it. It's pretty interesting malware. Pretty interesting that the Kronos Bank in Trojan was used to deliver this particular uh, piece of P POS malware as well. And hopefully, that serves as a good kind of um, summary and, and, and a bit, a bit of a, a kind of how I would approach analyzing this uh, really, really quickly to get a view on what this particular malware is doing. Okay, thanks, guys. Cheers.